All right. Hi, I'm Apurva Shil from IBC Media and I have with me Abhinav Ramesh, the co-founder of two blockchain startups in India. So how are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm quite glad to be here. Thank you. And uh, so you were a part of the Genesis Hackathon, the Genesis Hack launch event. So how, how did you like the event? Or what do you think about the concept that we are trying to build here? So I uh, really like the concept uh, because I feel that, you know, it is time to build the blockchain developer community in India. And I think Genesis Hack is a great start in enabling uh, Indian developers to actively build large scale or small scale blockchain uh, applications, whether that's on a private blockchain or a uh, uh, public blockchain. So hence, I think it's a great initiative and I'm glad to be here. All right. So uh, during the event, there was a panel discussion that you were a part of. And uh, I think Abhishek from Nucleus Vision brought up this uh, point that blockchain has a business dimension to it. And you have uh, not one, but two blockchain startups under your hood right now. So I would just like to ask you, um, what is the scope of that business dimension that, uh, especially with the context of India, what do you think is the scope? Like what goes into starting a blockchain startup if an entrepreneur wants to do that in the Indian economy right now or in the Indian landscape right now? What all things go into that? Yeah, so uh, basically, um, you know, so... We have a large development firm called Chain Flux, which is based out of uh, Hyderabad. Um, two products that we have built. One is uh, Wandex, which is basically a decentralized exchange on multiple blockchains. And we have built a product called Murmur, which is basically a Twitter on EOS or Twitter on the EOS blockchain, which is already live and running. So what I think goes into running these, uh, creating a blockchain startup is trying to come up with a very solid use case and knowing what problem can be solved and why blockchain is the perfect solution for that problem. And then comes all the nitty-gritties of hiring a, a good core team of developers who you trust and who can understand the fundamentals behind a blockchain. And then gradually build out the application quickly and build out something small that people can quickly try and use and give you feedback. So I think kind of going through the standard startup process but in this case, it is using a blockchain. So that I would say would be the only difference. But otherwise, it's a standard kind of startup MVP process. So that blockchain angle that has to be brought in, uh, that how easy or difficult, not very great words to define it, but how does that implementation or that incorporation of the technology uh, looks like? I mean, is it easy to do or fairly easy? Or what would you, how would you rate it? So I would say it's, um, uh, it's uh, fairly, not fairly easy but kind of easy to do um, now there is a lot of documentation that is coming out in the market a lot of courses are there so new developers or people who don't know too much even about development can get into blockchain specifically because uh, there are a lot of online courses there are a lot of reading material um, you know you go through that and you start understanding okay what is the core concept behind blockchain behind building decentralized applications or a private blockchain uh, and then, you know, once people spend time on it, I don't think it should take more than three to six months for them to become reasonably proficient and to develop blockchain based application. That's where I see kind of Genesis hack also coming in and having a six month long kind of training period and testing period and hackathon period and then having the final after that so that people are familiar with the technology. And just one last question for any startup, it's very important for them to communicate what they're building or what they're trying to do to the people who are going to be using their product. So uh, you said that essentially Murmur is like a Twitter on the EOS uh, mainnet. So um, what problem was there? I mean, for the end user, how easier it would be to differentiate between what the traditional Twitter platform is offering them and what Murmur is doing. So, uh, how, how do you get... How do you take care of that communication? Yeah, so basically we don't communicate it as a Twitter on blockchain. That's the wrong communication. Uh, I mean, just to make it easy, I said that. Yeah. But technically, uh, you know, there are two things that we are solving. Uh, one is, um, you know, when uh, in on any social network, uh, they control the ads. Uh, they control what ads users sees. They control your data. And based on the data, they optimize the ads that you are seeing. And then they make quite a bit of, the, they monetize those ads quite uh, handsomely. What we are saying is that we are kind of decentralizing that and enabling users to know what kind of ads they would like to see. And also kind of potentially get rewarded for even watching ads and not having any central party store user data.
That's wonderful. Um, I guess that's um, all that I have. Any advice that you would like to give to entrepreneurs per se who want to do something in the blockchain uh, area? Sure. I mean, uh, start reading up as much as possible. Uh, read up on blockchain, on um, what the core concepts are and what it aims to disrupt. Uh, hackathons like Genesis Hack is a great uh, place where you can get your hands dirty even for a month you can kind of uh, you know learn a bit and then start building something uh, from scratch and then just keep keep uh, kind of progressing because there is enough material online for you to kind of learn it comprehensively thank you